Uh, my name is Shelly Mountjoy, and I'm the president of the National Response Squad at GMU. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight, and I also want to thank the Secular Student Alliance for putting us in touch with PZ. Um, and like I said, our guests tonight, we're honored and very excited uh, to have PZ come talk to us. Um, he's, the, uh, he's a biology professor at the University of Minnesota, Morris. Um, he maintains a blog, Ferengula. Um, where he writes on creationism, biology, <coughs> evolution, and scientific development. In 2005, his blog won the Kovacs Award for the Best Expert Blog, um, and Nature describes um, his blog as the top-rated blog written by scientists. He's a prominent critic of creationism and intelligent design, and tonight um, the topic of his talk is science education, caught in the middle in the war between science and religion. Okay, it's kind of a dry title, I know. Science education, no, that's not very, that's not, that's not real exciting. Um, what will probably be more exciting is when I start talking about the war between science and religion, I hope. And this is, this is a somewhat controversial topic. Many people like to claim that there is no such thing as a war between science and religion, that they're perfectly compatible. And I think they're completely wrong. And uh, I'll be making a little bit of a case for that. And, and that it really is a problem, that we have a growing problem with the quality of science education in this country. And we can trace it back to one little problem, and it's right there. It's, it's that word religion. That, that's the big difficulty that we have right now. But before I get into that, I'm, I'm going to be a, a little bit of an accommodationist. I'm going to be a little bit of an appeaser here. And I'm going to say a few words uh, that I think will not be controversial, and that I, th I hope, you know, even, even if there are some diehard religious people here, that you'll agree with me on this particular point. And this is a very simple issue, uh, that the science classroom has to remain a secular place. Now, what does that mean? That means that when students come into a biology classroom, or a chemistry classroom, or a physics classroom, they should be able to go in there and they should be able to get instruction in those disciplines without anyone trying to proselytize. No one should be trying to convert them to whatever religion they believe. And I would say that also atheism doesn't belong there. That, that is not the place where we should be telling students that you don't believe in God or you shouldn't believe in God. Uh, that would only be a distraction from the business at hand. I, I, there may be a few science professors, science <laughs> teachers here, and you know that we have a hard time getting through all the material as it is without having to worry about philosophical notions about the existence of God. And so that belongs completely out of the classroom. That's the goal. That's the simple goal. Is let's just make sure that there's no encroachment of religion into the science classroom. Let's keep it secular. Uh, there is some good news in this particular part of the story in that we're doing a fairly good job of that. That we've got a couple of organizations that I tell everyone, you have to join these. If you aren't a member of NCSE or Americans <coughs> United, you should go home tonight and correct this little deficiency very quickly. Uh, national Center for Science Education is the only national organization that we've got that is working to oppose creationism in the classroom. They are a national clearinghouse for information uh, if you're a reporter and you've got a creation evolution story going on in your particular bailiwick, you call Eugenie Scott because she's got the story. She probably knows more about what's going on in your district right now than you do. Uh, it's, it's a very useful, very powerful place. Uh, they have been advising in many of the recent court situations. Uh, for instance, in the uh, Kitzmiller case, which many of you may have heard of, the case in Dover which uh, was settled resoundingly in favor of evolution. We can thank a lot of that to people at NCSE or associated with the NCSE. They did a lot of the basic research. It uncovered sort of the half-truths and lies and, and uh, misleading statements that the people made in that particular situation. The other one is Americans United for Separation of Church and State. Uh, that's actually why I'm here in Washington, D.C. is I'm, I'm here to, at a meeting for Americans United uh, it's a great organization, and like NCSE, neither of these are atheist organizations, neither of these are religious organizations. 
That's the important thing about being secular, is you just say, we're going to stay out of that fight altogether. And so they have, they have done that. Americans United is just there, there to say, keep religion out of government, as well as classrooms and other things like that. And, and this, is a, this is a great goal for them to be working for. And if you talk to the leaders of the, either of these groups, you can talk to Eugenie Scott, who happens to be an atheist, or Barry Lynn, who happens to be a, a minister, and they'll tell you the same thing, that they're not there to proselytize for their personal beliefs, which is a great thing. That's what we want. So we've got these, these great organizations that have been doing a phenomenal job. Uh, they, they keep on hammering at this stuff. Uh, we've also got a great body of legal precedent in this country. This, this one is sometimes hard to get across to people, but uh, they all hear these about the scopes trial and so forth, and I keep on hearing these trials coming up. But the amazing thing is that every one of these trials, except the scopes trial, we lost the scopes trial, but it was overturned on a technicality. All of these trials, have been settled conclusively in, the f in favor of science and against religion in the classroom. It's like this rock-solid body of precedent that's been built up in this country that says, no, you can't sneak this stuff into the classroom, and it's great. It means that when these trials occur, like the Dover trial, uh, they're, they're st the, the odds are stacked against the creationists right from the beginning. Because if you've got even a conservative judge as the judge in the Dover trial was, he's going to rely on case law. That's the heart of, of uh, judicial decisions, is let's look at past, past case law. And past case law says, no, you don't get to teach creationism in the classroom. So this is really good, that we have got this solid bulwark built up around the classroom to protect it from encroachment. Uh, these, these guys, you know, I, I picture people, you know, NCSE and AU as, as kind of the, you know, the guardians of the classroom. They're centurions standing there, standing guard over the classroom door. And it's terrific. They do a phenomenal job. However, and here's, here's the big, big however, uh, we're still losing. We're still losing the bigger war. We are doing a phenomenal job of, of defending the classroom. But at the same time, if you look at the culture around us, it's kind of terrifying. I mean, look at this recent election. That, that was some scary stuff going on there. How could those people even get in, in, into the slate? 